you haven't done so yet, please pause the video now and attempt to do the question before listening on. In this question, we are essentially being asked to find the resultant, which is the sum of the three vectors that are labeled A, B, and then C. The key to solving this question is to break vectors A, B, and C into their X and Y components. For example, for vector A, we can extend a line from the point where vector A begins in the positive X direction. This will turn out to be the X component of vector A. We can also extend a line in the positive Y direction, which will turn out to be the Y component of vector A. And we can attach arrowheads to show that the X component points to the right and the Y component points upward. Now, let's take note that vector A has a length of 175 kilometers. And that is essentially the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Now, to find the X component, we will take note that the X component is adjacent to the 30 degree angle. And therefore, we can use cosine. More specifically, it will become 175 times the cosine of 30. Since it's pointing to the right, we will call it positive. The Y component is opposite to the 30 degree angle, so we will be using the sine. We can label that 175 times the sine of 30 degrees. And the Y component is pointing straight up, so it too will be positive. The nice thing about finding the components is that once you have them, you can essentially erase the resultant vector that's labeled A. We no longer need it. We only need the X and the Y components. We will move on to vector B now, and as before, we will draw its components. Starting from where vector B begins, we can project a line straight upward, which is going to represent the Y component. We also have a line that projects to the left, which will represent the X component. Once again, we can attach arrowheads to show the directions of these vectors. We will note from the question that the length of vector B is 150 kilometers. Now, to the x component, we'll notice that it is opposite of the 20 degree angle, and therefore we can use sine. Specifically, this x component will become 150 sine of 20, and since it points to the left, we have to make sure that we make it negative. Very important point. The y component is pointing upward, and it is adjacent to the 20 degree angle, so we can use cosine. Specifically, the y component becomes 150 times the cosine of 20. It is pointing straight up, so it will be positive. As before, we can now eliminate vector B because we've broken it up into its X and Y components. Our final vector is vector C. Now, something peculiar about vector C that we should notice is that it points exclusively in the X direction. And what that means is that there is no Y component. There is only an X component. And since the question mentions that the length of vector C is 190 kilometers, that means the X component is that 190 kilometers, and it's pointing to the left. So we should actually call it negative 190 kilometers. That is the X component. The Y component is zero. So we have successfully broken all of the vectors into their components. We can now organize the information into a sort of table. And in that table along the left side, we have the three vectors. And at the top, we have the X and Y components. All we need to do is fill in the components that we've found thus far. Once we've entered the components into the table, our next step is to add all of the X components together so that we get an overall X component of the resultant. And then we will also add the Y components together so that we will get an overall Y component of the resultant. And when you do that, you should get the following results for the X and Y component of the resultant. Now we can return back to the diagram and try to interpret how these components relate to the picture of the resultant. Notice that the X component was negative 89.75. So if we were to start back at the origin and go along the negative X direction, we would project a vector of about that magnitude. The Y component was positive 228.45. So we would project a vector straight up because it's positive. And you'll notice as we do this that we are taking the components and forming a right triangle with the resultant, the X component being one side of the right triangle and the Y component being the other. And since they form a right triangle, we can simply use Pythagorean theorem to calculate the magnitude or the length of the resultant. So we would have the resultant squared, which is the hypotenuse notice of this right triangle, equals one leg of the triangle squared, which is the X component, 
plus the other leg of the right triangle, which is the y component. We could simplify the right side on our calculator, and you should get approximately 60,246. Now that's still r squared, so we're going to have to take the square root of both sides. And when we do that, we get the magnitude of the resultant. It turns out to be approximately 245 kilometers. So that would be the magnitude. What the question also wants is the direction. And that can be expressed in a number of ways. But perhaps one way would be to find this angle right here within the right triangle. Now that angle, which we could call theta, can be found by using the tangent because we have the opposite side to that angle as well as the adjacent. So we could write out the formula that the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite side of 228.45 divided by the adjacent, which is 89.75. To solve for the angle, we would take the inverse tangent of that fraction, which would turn out to be approximately 68.6 degrees. Now we have to just be careful how we phrase that. We can't just say 68.6 degrees because that would be somewhat ambiguous. In some cases, probably so in this question, because of the phrasings of west of north and north of east, we may have to express the angle in those terms as well. So take notice that this angle out here, we could regard that angle as being to the west, because remember west is this way, to the west of the northerly direction. North is straight up. So they'll often say things like west of north. And indeed, we can actually find this angle that is west of north. All we need to remember is that if this angle, which we just found, is 68.6 degrees, we can subtract that from 90, right? Because here's a 90 degree angle right here. We can subtract that from 90 to find this angle right here. And when we do that, we obtain a result of 21.4 degrees. So we could report our angle as 21.4 degrees west of north. And that would be consistent with the way in which the angles were expressed in the question originally. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You are also welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen.